Okay, this time we're going to add some actual animations. The last video we added just a single image that like flashed, and we flashed the color of the enemy. Now we're going to actually add multiple frames to an animation. So first thing we're going to do to help with organization is we're going to create a folder. So right click where it says assets, choose create, choose folder. You can name it whatever we want. We're going to call it poison since it's going to be a poison animation for skill number three. Go to the folder that you have your animation cells in. And again, these were drawn in Anime Studio Pro. And now we need to add the object to our scene. So game object, click, create empty. Call it poison. So if you don't have it already displayed up here, the animation tab, you're going to need to right click and choose add tab and then choose animation. So with the object highlighted, click on animation. Come down here to poison. Select your images. Typical way that you do a group select, you click on the first one, hold shift, click on the last one. You can just drag and drop this right up here. It'll automatically open a dialog window because you're trying to save a new animation. So we'll call it Poison Sequence. Hit the red button to stop it from recording because it automatically clicked that on when you dragged and drop. Let's change that frame rate a little bit slower. It's hard to see because uh, it's just bubbles and they green, but each image is actually displayed along the bottom here. Down here you can see that in animation and an animator object were created, indicating that it's the sequence we created and that it's on the poison object. So you could actually attach this sequence to multiple objects and you would get this um, component for each and every one that it's attached to. Our poison objects over here out of the actual production area. And I probably never mentioned it but anything outside of this will not be shown in production. Basically, this is still just a preview mode. So let's go ahead and test it. Sure enough, there it is. With the animation added to our poison object, we're almost ready to turn it into a prefab. We just have to do some more housekeeping to it like we did with Slash, and that is we need to make it self-destruct we can do one of two things. We can either use exactly the same script and just have it check for the name of the object to see which self-destruct timing it's going to use because they're on different timers. Or what we can do is we can just create its own script. Project this small, six one way, one half dozen the other. So we'll just click on it, choose add component, choose new script. We'll call it SD for self-destruct and poison. C sharp by default, we can choose create and add. Double click to open that up. Because it's a game of a uh, very limited scope and it's really not a lot of processing it's really no big deal. It's a wash whether or not you want to put the if statements in here or if you just want to create a new script with a larger script and, the, and if it's more complex there may be a benefit to doing it one way or the other. In this case it's really a wash. So it's just a matter of you want another script kicking around or not. Save that. So now, it should only sequence cycle once. Okay, so a little bit too long because we see the bubbles appear again. Perfect. 
And so now we click on that object, drag it down, and now we have our prefab. Destroy the original from the scene, and now we're ready to instantiate it. So we'll go back to the GM. We're going to go back to Battle Flow, and just like last time, we have to add a variable. object. So that creates the variable. We'll save it. We'll come back here. Variable appeared over here. Take out poison object. Drag and drop it there. Go back to the script. And now that needs to get instantiated. this code and just repurpose it. So we put it where you check for skill 3 because skill 3 is the damage over time. So we just need to change the name of it to poison object. Oops, if I could spell. We're going to want it even higher up on the screen. And that should do it because now it will uh, automatically come to neither. And in neither, we automatically start the curl routine to wait for the animation, so I think we're good to go. And so I'm going to hit the number three key, and sure enough, it did appear. But it's not in front, so I made one mistake. So let's go back to here, order in the layer, change that to three. What I did was push it vertically up higher on the y axis. And we'll run it one last time. Okay, so let's now add a single frame of animation for when the enemy attacks. So let's do a little housekeeping first. We've been using this default name of the frame. Let's change this to enemy object. And then the second thing we're going to do is go to wherever the frame is stored. Drag and drag it in like the other ones. Now this is going to get a script, something that it hasn't had at this point. So click on enemy object, click on new script, and we'll call this... And we'll just use monster instead of enemy because we use enemy in a lot of places. So we want to make sure that we're not accidentally referring to the wrong component or the wrong variable. So let's go ahead and double click on that. Open that up. And what we're going to do is first we need to add those two frames. So this time it's a sprite type. Okay, so we save this. And if you notice, they get added over here. So we drag and drop. The idle one is the same one that's being used as the default image. But if we want to change it v 
be a code, we need to make it be an actual variable. So we just dragged and dropped those there. Go back to the script. And we want to check to see if it's the enemy's turn. And if you call that's the who's turn variable. I'm going to do a couple things in here. So we're going to use get component. So if it's the enemy's turn, look at the sprite renderer component, the sprite attribute within that component, and it should now be the new variable we created, enemy attack. And now we're going to have to come back here to add the reference to the coroutine, but we have to create the coroutine first. So that's IE numerator, and we'll just call it um, attack delay. And in here it is again the same verbiage yield return new wait for seconds. And we'll leave it on the screen for like one second even. Again, it's you can tweak that as much as you want, have it be on the screen longer, shorter, whatever works for your particular purpose. And let's take this, save a little typing, we'll copy it here. And we just have to change this to enemy idle. So if it's the enemy's turn, change the sprite to enemy attack. Wait one second, change it back. Now we just have to add in the reference to this. So start coroutine that should do it. So I'm going to hit the attack and then it should counter attack. And there it is. And you can decide how long you want that enemy attack to stay in the screen.